Okay. Um, so this last part, part four, um, because I don't, I think this was really all that I really wanted to break down, um, with, like with the video at, uh, this point. So this part four is about, um, the kids in my life. In the video, I, I talk about, you know, the kids in my life, they're not meant to know me. Um, and you know, I will stand by it to this day. Um, because besides my nephew Quave, my nephew Quave, he, he was coming, you know, regardless. And, um, he, he is here, but, but in college, me and my friend, um, Alyssa, or I think it was Alicia. I, I can't, I can't remember really, um, how you pronounce her name, but she's on my Instagram. Um, I, I think it was that we had to do a project or something. It was something about we had to do a project, I think, um, to where it was something involving like big brothers, big sisters. Um, I can't, I can't really put my finger on it, but, um, or, or it was that she had a little and she told me about big brothers, big sisters, but, um, either way, I felt like, um, at that point in time, I was using people as like, not resources, but as a way to hold me accountable. So at that particular time, you know, when I thought about Big Brother, Big Sisters, when I learned about it, I was just like, well, hey, this is, this is a way for me to kind of stay together. You know, this is a way for me to um really kind of somebody has with a little somebody's going to hold me accountable i'm gonna have to actually get up and actually make sure that i'm putting myself together and you know um being the best person that i can be because i'm a mentor um so that's why i got into big brothers big sisters and uh, when i got sanaya it just happened to be um she happened to be um, at Cobb Center, which was a place where me and my twin sister used to play ball and my sister. Um, so I knew everybody there, like Myra, you know, Reba and, but I never really, um, but I didn't know them like that. Like I knew them from growing up, but of course, you know, um, they knew us from playing ball, but after that, you know, years passed, but I still knew them. So, um, it just happened to be that, um, she was, um, she was the niece of, um, like one of my old basketball coaches. So, um, so yeah, the very first day, I still remember it to this day, the very first day that I met her, um, and it was great. And, um, and I remember Big Brothers, Big Sisters, um, you know, they, they could allow you to like pick, like if you didn't like your little, you could go and tell them and pick. And now when I first got to Big Brothers Big Sisters, I told them like, Hey, I want a boy because, um, you know, I'm a tomboy. I, you know, I don't wear makeup. I don't, I don't do the girly thing. Like I'm not a girly girl. So please don't stick me with, you know, a girly girl, you know, just don't do that because I have to make sure that I, like me and this little has something in common. Um, and so they kind of waited, but then they said, well, hey, you know, we have a little, um, but it's a girl. Um, so if you want, you can meet her. And then if you don't, you know, like the, um, the match, then you can just let us know. So, but at the same time, you know, I'm really big on everything happens for a reason. So I just, I was just like, well, no, you know, if you're saying you're sticking me with a girl, then clearly I, I have a little, that's a girl, which I didn't, um, which I didn't mind too much because like I said, I mean, I just, I mean, when my mom talked about it, she was like, well, if you get a girly girl, that's a way for you to, you know, maybe see if you like getting your nails done and stuff like that. And, you know, I thought about it. I was just like, okay, well, um, sure. And, 
you know, it turns out I do love getting my nails done, um, but I would never do like the whole makeup thing, which I'm really happy. My little, she, oh my goodness, I just, but anyways, I'm getting off on a tangent, but, um, but yeah, um, so yeah, they matched me with her and I met her and I still remember the first day that I met her and, you know, it was just, it was great after that. Now, literally, she just graduated high school and she's off into the world, but, but like I said, like, I would not have known her. She's not meant to know me because if my, if my sister Jaleesa was here, that's, that's, um, cause if my sister Jaleesa was here, I wouldn't have got into big brothers and sisters and I didn't even care for kids. I, I didn't. That's, that's another reason why I say, um, that's another reason why I say she left me the best of her because she she just loved kids. She loved kids and um, she loved anything. She loved anything that walked and breathed and anything that didn't even, I mean, she, she just loved everything. I mean, she really did. And so just a humanitarian at its finest. I mean, and so literally after she passed, it's like, I mean, if she was here, I, I would not even be thinking about getting into Brave Brothers and Sisters. So, and I got my little because to help me out. You know, I, I didn't think about, oh, well, does this little need help? It was, it was literally like, hey, I need somebody that's going to hold me a accountable and to help, help me stay afloat. And luckily God gave me a little who didn't need help. So, I mean, Sanaya didn't need no help. I really don't even know why she was in Big Brothers Big Sisters, to be honest. I mean, I like still to this day, I've always wanted to ask her mom, why did you put her in there? Because she didn't need Big Brothers Big Sisters to me. I mean, she was a great kid and she was, she's so smart. So I don't, still to this day, I just don't know. Um, but I figured, you know, everything happened for a reason. Maybe God knew that I needed a little like that, you know, because God knew what I was searching for. And so, you know, God knows, um, he knows. So I, so I feel as though he gave her to me because, you know, it was a two way street, but it was a very, um, soft relationship. You know, it was kind of like neither one of us gave either one any trouble. I mean, we just didn't. And, and we just had a great, great 10 years so far because I actually got her my sister passed away in 2010 and I got into Big Brother Big Sister in April of 2011 so it was literally only six to seven months or six months after my sister had had actually passed so um so it was it was definitely recent I mean it was not it wasn't like I waited five years and and then got into Big Brothers Big Sisters. No, it was like six months after. Um, and so, um, so I think God, I don't know, like God, God just sent me the perfect little. I mean, he just, he just sent me the absolute perfect little. I mean, so, um, and now she's about to turn 18. And so this month on june 23rd so yeah she um and now we just have a forever just a forever friendship you know and it's just it's beautiful um it's a beautiful thing and then but and of course with my godson brendan you know i met him um by my twin sister taking me to um she went to go uh buy some chicken nuggets for his mom candace and when I met her for the first time, Brendan, he was on the floor, he was crying and Candace was really spaced out. Like she really was. And I remember to this day, like I looked at Brendan and I just, I wanted no parts of what was in that house. And I was wondering why my sister decided to keep company like that. I don't, I don't know. Um, but then I later found out like, she liked her, you know, so they liked each other. They had like a kind of thing going. And so I, you know, you know, to each his own, but, um, 
But yeah, and literally right after on her funeral, um, like, or the day she passed away right afterwards, um, I noticed that Candace, um, and I know this for a fact, Jaleesa had, she had $10 in her wallet and we were at the mall. And so this is the day she passed away. We were at the mall. We were looking in Old Navy and she wanted a shirt and I was just like, no, um, you know, you only have $10. You have the rest of your life to buy shirts. So, so I told her, you know, put it back because, you know, you're about to go on a trip. You know, you need money. And so, but she, she didn't care. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, but she listened to me. She didn't get the shirt. And, um, the very, uh, Next day, like after she passed away, Candace said, Hey, you know, Jaleesa, she gave me, like, I have $10. She gave me $10 the day she passed away. So she had loved us and then went to see Candace. And so um, she said, Hey, like, you know, I want to give you back this $10. Jaleesa, she had gave me $10 um, the day she passed. And I know for a fact that was the same ten dollars that she had left that uh she was gonna um buy a shirt with but just like jaleesa that just that just that just shows that i know for a fact she gave me the she left me the best of her because she she gave she literally gave candace her last because i know for a fact that was her last ten dollars and she gave it to her and so and ever since then, you know, I knew Candace was good people. You know, she was maybe a drug addict or a drug dependent, but I knew from that she was good people. So um, we've had our ups and downs, but I know the type of person Candace can be. So, you know, that's why it's like, you know, she's okay in my books. And But like I said, I wouldn't have went back and got to know Brendan the way I did or or became his godmom or anything unless it was the fact that Candace hits me up and then we decided to, you know, still be friends and she was like, Do you wanna come over and meet my son? And then that was it. You know, that was all she wrote. I mean and after that, you know, I just fell in love with him. So, um but yeah, that's the same. Same goes for, you know, my guardian ad litem kids, you know, I wouldn't be in the guardian ad litem program if I wasn't searching for my godson Brendan when he was taken into foster care, um, cause that was my way of, of trying to locate him. Um, and I knew he, he had a guardian ad litem. So I decided to be a guardian ad litem trying to locate him. And that was how I, I found Austin, Dalen and Byron. I mean, so all of my kids, I mean, oh, and my nephew, Nashawn, um, well, he was there before, yeah, so me and my sister, Julissa, we met him when he was three, so I can't really count him, but yeah, all of the other kids, and then my godson, Xander, you know, he's in foster care now, but he's, he's way over on the other side of the world, um, but yeah, all of my kids, I would not have known them if it wasn't for her death. Period. I mean, I know that for a fact. I just, I would not know them. So, um, that's just what I mean. Where I say that they're not meant to know me because they're just not, you know. I mean, and I would never accept. And it's hard to say because all of my kids, I love them so much. But I want them to realize that when they lose a loved one. You will never accept the life after. You just won't. And so, um, you know, that's just what that is. So, um, but yeah, um, I hope y'all enjoyed this other part. Um, if there's any other parts of, of the video from when I uploaded it that, that y'all want me to kind of break down, um, you know, um, I definitely will, but that's just what I mean when I say they're not meant to know me because, you know, they're just not, you know. This life that I have right now, I'm still working on, I'm forever grateful, but I still work on having to accept it. 
um, you know, because I want the life with her, you know, and the, and it's nothing personal to any of my kids, you know, it's just not, it's nothing personal, um, but they won't know until they lose a loved one, you know, they just won't, so, um, yeah.